Welcome to the Digging Deep Pay TV MX Podcast with your host, hailing from Kakana, Wisconsin, riding a CST Tires SSI decals traveling back Yamaha YFC 450R, four time ATV Motocross National Champion, number 25. Cody Jensen. What's up, everybody? We're back. Welcome to the latest edition of the Digging Deep ATBMX podcast, episode 145 of the Digging Deep ATBMX podcast, presented by our title sponsor, CSD Tires, in stock and available for purchase today at shop.csdtires.com. I'm your host, Cody Jansen, saying hello to our more than 264,000 monthly Digging Deep listeners in all 109 countries in which you are listening, and this is our highly anticipated episode featuring an exclusive sit-down with Joel Hetrick where we discuss the unthinkable, the first ever perfect season, the first undefeated season by an ATV motocross professional in the history of the sport. In an effort to avoid jinxing the man, we've been holding off all season long to bring you tonight's guest. Three consecutive championships, five titles overall, an undefeated season, surpassing his rival Chad Wienan's career number of total wins, another quad cross of Nations appearance, and bench racing stories that you have to hear to believe. It's all here. Join us as we welcome the fastest man on the planet, Mr. Joel Hetrick, to this episode of the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast. Podcast. But before we drop the gate, let's quickly shout out all of our incredible partners. CST Tires, go to shop.csttires.com today. Yamaha, thanks to Blue Crew. Thanks to SSI Decals, Valvoline, DID Racing Chain, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV Components, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply, the financial advice of the Haymauer Financial Group, DP Brakes, Factory 43, Binky's Forever ATC Museum, Impact Solutions, Ultimate Poly Products, UPP Racing, our choice when it comes to case savers, chain sliders, intake manifolds, and more. Use discount code DIGGINGDEEP15 at UPPRacing.com, the D6 Ultimate Quad Series, and Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at Manscaped.com. Com. Whether it's the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, the GOAT of electric razor trimmers, my personal favorite, the Beard Hedger Pro Kit from Manscaped, or the best nose hair trimmer ever created, the Weed Whacker 2.0, get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at Manscaped.com. So rad that Manscaped is continuing to invest in ATB Racing as a longtime partner of Digging Deep. Help us keep them in the fold and involved in ATB Racing by using our Digging Deep 20 code so they know you're listening, you enjoy Digging deep and you enjoy what we're all about support all the great companies that support us and for any products that fall through the cracks click that rocky mountain atvmc banner on our website to help us out it's definitely that time of year our machines are in need of some much needed tlc and no matter what off-road gear parts you need rocky mountain atvmc has you covered but before you buy simply click that rocky mountain atvmc banner on our website but using our specific link we get a percentage of what you buy on the back end enabling you to help us out while purchasing the parts you need anyway and did you know you can buy oem parts from rocky mountain atvmc as well yep shipped conveniently right to your door so click that rocky mountain atvmc banner at diggingdeepatvmx.com to help us out while satisfying all your gear and parts needs Shout out to all of our donors, and if you are interested in donating and hearing your name on the show, you can find the Patreon or Buy Me a Coffee donation links on our website. Major thanks to all who have donated, of course. Now, if you can't donate, but you still want to help us out, you can leave us a rating or a review on iTunes and Spotify, because that helps us out a bunch too. Now, it's showtime. The 30-second board is up, it's sideways, and the gate is down. Time to dig deep. Let's go! All right, guys, we are back here on the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast, and you already know who we have scheduled for tonight. He's your reigning, defending, undisputed AMA ATV Pro Class national champion, back to back to back, five times overall, Mr. Joel Hattrick. Joel, welcome back to the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast, pal. What's up, man? Glad to be back. So, pal, we've been we've been anxiously waiting basically all season long to talk to you, buddy. It's been uh, it's been a long time coming, it feels like. Yeah, I know. I've been wanting to, you know, get some minutes on the show for sure throughout the year after, you know, even 
some of the beginning races were were so good that I obviously wanted to talk about the the season even early on. But as it went on longer, uh, we didn't want to talk about it. So it just that's the position we were in. Yeah, man. And we'll talk about this. Like you and I talked at Sunset Ridge. And by that point, obviously, we already knew like perfect season was on the radar already, right. of course. And and I had said to you there that how could I have you on the show and not talk about it? But I didn't want to jinx it with you and all those things. And and it was funny. It was fun Absolutely. for me. It's fun for me to listen to you say, hey, man, thank you. Thank you yeah. for not putting that on me because I know we can't talk about it right now. And then it was fun for you to be like giving us a glimpse into the conversations even you and Carly had about like, Hey, like, why, why do you feel this pressure? You know, right. like just, I really enjoyed that. And I'm so happy that it actually came together. You actually pulled this thing off and now we can have this conversation. Like, man, what was it like? Because you're, this is uncharted territory. Like nobody ever did this before. It probably feels like you don't even know how to feel almost. That's exactly right. You just really don't know how to feel because it's something that one, I didn't, you know, set out to do. So it's, it wasn't like a goal of mine to go undefeated even though we we watched Jet Lawrence that year prior go undefeated and how how cool is that i would obviously wanted to want to win every race but yeah i don't know so in in and even in the dirt bike world right like obviously undefeated season is amazing i mean ricky does it bubba did it you know jet does it now i mean it's happened a few times but in the ATV world and whether it's wear and tear is harder or, you know, whatever, obviously different budgets and different race programs. I mean, all those things that probably factor into it. But the fact that you did this thing, like you did something nobody ever did before. And I said on, I think on our review show, like you did something that all the greats, like, I don't know what your Mount Rushmore looks like, right. but all the greats, right? Like Chad and Gary and Timmy Farr, Jeremiah Jones, all the guys, Digger Doug, like all the dudes, nobody ever did that before. So to think like you did something, and that's what I was thinking about that day, watching all the emotion in your face. And, and obviously it was, it was very apparent, like when you're on the podium and you're just taking it in yeah and to absolutely. think like all the dudes that you and i looked up to like all the dudes that you looked up to growing up none of those guys ever did john natale is actually i think the guy that came the very closest in 2005 really? john natale never did it wow you know like it's just it's amazing to think about dude you did something nobody else has ever done in the history of atv racing man that's just the craziest thing it's it's incredible and it's it is the craziest thing to me because it's just I've done it my entire life. And like you said, I've watched and idolized these guys do this sport. And, you know, throughout the years of me watching when I was little to to now, I guess I've never seen it done. And mm -hmm. and to do it, to be the guy to do it after encountering these guys, racing these guys, growing up with everyone, and then doing, you know, winning my championship at Briarcliff with everybody back there for one, that that was just top notch. And then uh to go to Loretta's and finish it off and go undefeated. As soon as I came off the track, it was more like, um, like stress relieved. I feel mm -hmm. like I, I, I wasn't like super excited yet. I was just like thankful that that just happened. The race is over. I can probably, I can breathe now because I was just so tight, dude. So, so tense driving there. Like you could say one thing to me and I'm just, just not having a good time snapping off at people, you know? <laughs> so yeah, the, it, it was just relieving once I crossed the finish line. And then once on the podium, once he said, uh, this has never been done in a 40 years of ATV motocross history that like hit me so hard. I was like, Oh my gosh, man. Like I've, I've raced for over 25 years. That's where it just all hit me. I was like this, that I've done it. I did. That's a, that's the biggest thing I could do in ATV racing. And I have just accomplished it. And I watched it hit you. It was exactly that quote when, when he said 40 years and the 40 yep. years of this sport, it's never happened. And then I watched it hit you like, man, this legacy is going to live like this year. Like the legend of this year is going to live on for so long. It's just, it's, it was awesome to see it play out in person. I mean, you, you think about a perfect season, you think about 19 and 0, 20 and 0, if you count that heat race at Daytona. Right. And that's why, like, I've never won a championship in the pro class, obviously, but like even, even an amateur championship, like it's hard to quantify 
Like at the end, you're like, well, yeah, obviously I was the champion. Mm -hmm. But like then if you think about each race as it plays out and the individual hurdles at each race and like all the little things that maybe had it in doubt a little bit at one point, that's when it feels so special. So then when you're talking about a perfect season, like all the little hurdles, all the the, there's probably moments that nobody else saw where you got got a little sketchy or, you know, you heard something in the engine or whatever. And then we'll get into Loretta's. We'll get into Loretta's like Loretta's was, was probably the sketchiest race of the year with all the stuff that happened, let alone the pressure. So, so we'll, we'll talk about all that, but yeah, that's what I meant by like, it's probably hard to even feel all the emotions of like, well, like when you sit back and look at it, I mean, you're the fastest guy on the planet, right? Like we know that. So it's like, well, obvious, I mean, to win every race, well, obviously I I expect to win every race, but at the same time to go do it. And then to, you mm-hmm. know, the, 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 the stamp of nobody's ever done it before. That's just yeah. gotta be, that's gotta be the greatest feeling. So we'll jump around a little bit here, pal. I guess let's start here. How does somebody celebrate history like this that like something that's never ever been done before how do you celebrate that i know that you guys went to gallenberg you guys seemingly love that place as much as we do but tell me you know kind of as all the pressure goes away i can't imagine what it felt like to drive away from loretta's like Mm -hmm. having the dust settled and pulled this thing off tell me about the the emotions the celebration the great memories probably made with the family after that now that there was no more pressure what was that like how do you celebrate doing something nobody had ever done before Man, over the years, we probably would have partied hard at Loretta's, had some cocktails, got got too drunk and wrestled somebody. And we didn't get there this year. Um, I had like I had like two drinks at night and hung out with, you know, the team and, and talked about the day and everything and put the kids to bed probably around eight or nine. And then that was, you know hanging out with the team probably till nine or 10 and then went over with the Deckers and hung out with them, but really didn't d- get too loose. Like I just, I wasn't feeling the whole party. And so I just went back to the rig, hung out with Carly and then we went to Gatlinburg. Yeah. And that was, it's always a good time there. It was kind of uh kind of chill. There wasn't a ton of people there. Carly's Carly's uh family, her parents and Ava went and just the kids and man, we just, I just walked around and didn't have nothing to worry about anymore. You know, I just could, I didn't have to go train. I didn't have to ride. I didn't, I didn't have to worry about winning the next race or not. That's celebration enough, you know? Yeah. Like you have no idea. Just me walking around there with nothing to worry about. That was, that was the best thing ever. Other than like just worrying about my kids. But, um, yeah, that right there is, that's like the celebration to me is, being able to go to a place they enjoy and then ride. I, I rode some rides with them and yeah, um, just hung out and just, I don't know, just had family time really. And then uh, we get home and we'll celebrate with call of duty. <laughs> just be a normal guy. Like I yeah, said, celebrating normal. enough at this point. It's funny. Cause like when I was a kid at the racetrack, I would like going into the last race of the weekend or whatever. I'm like, okay, like I need to end this well, because whatever I'm doing next week, is going to make me that much happier doing it. Like, yep. you know, if you're going on a trip afterwards, I'm like, I'm going to enjoy this so much more if I just win this race right here. Yep. So I, I can't imagine what that felt like. I'm sure you must've got some, got some probably mini golf in your little guy. looks like he's obsessed oh, with the golf game. Yeah. He's, he's a nut with mini golf. We have, uh, he's got two of his own putters right now. <laughs> um, he's got a little mini putt little eight foot pad in the, in the house that he plays nonstop. We just went a little bit ago today. We went yesterday. It's almost every single day with him. And like, if I can get him to be a pro golfer, Holy cow, like that's we're in, we're in luck. Right. Being obsessed with some kind of sport must run in the family. Yeah, it must. He's, he's like dedicated to golf. And I think that's funny. Like uh, he, he just doesn't want to race nothing right now. So We'll hope that passes. Evelyn is determined to race. She's going to actually get a DR next year and um, maybe race a couple of the the easier, you know, safer tracks. The ones that she can go around all the hills, like no, really no elevation tracks I'll put her on. And I would feel safe with that, but we'll see how she rides this winter. Well, so fast forward to the end of this conversation. I was going to ask you, how are you going to follow this freaking thing up? Like you go undefeated. What do you do to follow this thing up? But maybe you, maybe you become moto dad in the process right. in adding that whole, whole song and dance to this thing is how you oh, want up. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine how you juggle all this dude. Dude, it, that would be, 
having her race at the track with me racing, it would be super tough. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be okay with her doing it right now, honestly, because I would want to be at the line on Saturday and it just might not work out. I don't know. Yeah. I I think Carly can handle it, but she's got two other ones to handle too now. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see how that plays out, but yeah, we need to have, you know, the Hetrick, the Hetrick racing name needs to live on with one of these oh, guys, yeah. right? One of them, one of these little buggers better race. So we got two, two boys and a girl that, and the girls are best chance right now, which is totally fine. But yeah. he loves yeah. Kinsey Osborne. If she wants to be like Kinsey, that's totally fine too. Be a winner and go fast. Like that's great. Good, good girl to idolize. Yeah. Side tangent here, but did you see that Dean Dillon's wanting to have somebody uh, go up against Kinsey? She, he thinks that he's got somebody across the pond that's going to put it to Kinsey. And I just, I, I don't want to be that guy oh. on the internet, but I want to be like, dude, you have no idea what you're getting into right here. I, I, I saw that. And I just really, I don't even know who the other girl is. Supposedly she won Loretta's in like 2012. Okay. Dude, but Kinsey's next level. She just is. Kinsey is next level and she would honestly, you know, do good at quad cross in some form of and beating some people there. So did you, did you see then what Harv commented? He said, well, maybe we, you know, Dean, if you sign up her for your quad cross of nations rider, <laughs> we'll have Kinsey on our team and we'll let him. Do it out. Crap. He said that. Yeah. That's insane. He's in the, <laughs> Oh man. I had I mean, to, uh, I had to mention it because I'm like, man, is that, is anybody else seeing this? Dude, she, I mean, she's running top five in a class. I, yeah, yeah, like she's riding on a different level for for a, a girl right now. I feel like unreal, on Un, absolutely unreal. So uh, let's take it back to you, though. I needed to mention Kinsey there when you mentioned the the girls. She's a yeah. Kinsey's a Kinsey's a great person for Evelyn to look up to. Obviously, yeah, she's absolutely. got her business her business. So squared away, she's awesome. But for you, pal. So at what point did, did you think about the potential of this perfect season? Cause like you said, you don't, that's not something you set out to do. Like, obviously the, you know, the championship is, is what your goal is. That's the way you're going to be remembered all those things. But at some point you start thinking about this thing, I'm sure. So be honest with me. At what point do you think about perfect season? What, at what point does that cross your mind as a possibility? Uh, so it, it was like in my head before Pleasure Valley a little bit. That late? Because that's mid-season, basically, at that yeah, point. Like, I just wanted to get past Pleasure Valley because I knew like, if it rained again and how that track can be, that just get me through there with a win. And I'll, I'll be good at the rest. Like I, I can, I can handle winning the rest on a, on a muddy day, on a dry day. Like I'm, I'm okay. And we got through Pleasure Valley. And then like, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm winning these last four races without a doubt. That's when I knew to myself, like, okay, I can do this right now. Got it. I just had to do pleasure Valley. And like, I knew mid season. I mean, I, because you and I, like I said, you and I talked about it at Sunset Ridge. It was already yeah. on your radar. You're like, hey, I don't, I'm glad I don't got to talk about it. I think that would have been the race before Pleasure Valley. Yeah. So, so it was already on your radar. I just, it's not one of those things where you take your mind to it probably publicly. It's probably something yeah. you don't even want to tell me. But at the same time, I just wondered, like, if you're a race or two in, maybe that I don't want to call it the elephant in the room, but you lose Chad. So he's like your, your right. rival. Right. So that, that yeah. does change the dynamics. Some, it does. So I just, I just wondered at one point where you're like, well, I know. And again, I know pleasure Valley is a hurdle, right? Like right. we haven't had the best luck there, but at the same time, I mean, I got to imagine you, you've obviously, you were thinking about it prior to that. Yeah. Like, I mean, even after at Chikani, like I, when I, I think I had like a 20 second lead in yeah, both you motos. The, you put the smack down at, at Chikani. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, after that, I was like, man, I felt so freaking good. And I felt like I could have rode harder if I had to, yeah. which is, is insane. But I just, I rode that style track all winter and Decker's really kind of helped me for all the, the races as it normally does. Yeah. But dude, I just beginning of the season, mid season, Late season, I didn't feel like as strong, uh, just because, like, I, I just drifted off a little bit and lost like as much focus for everything. I guess you could say, and and not even that. I guess because my ankle was jacked up after Briarcliff. So last four, last three rounds, I would say, 
I was like, I was tapering down to, to not as good as I was at the beginning. But at the beginning, I was like, there, there's nobody that can beat me right now on a dry day, straight up how I just rode at, at the past, at the past four races, I, I guess past four motos. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure down the stretch though. And I'm sure many, you know, racers, even at lower levels could relate to this down the stretch in the back of your mind. Like, and we watched you, we've watched you for a few seasons now. Like, you know, you get up six, seven, eight second lead and you're comfortable with that. Then you just manage, mm -hmm. but I'm sure in your mind, you're like, okay, if I got a lead, like I'm not going to push it too hard. I don't want right. to push this quad too hard. I don't want to do anything that's going to, you know, jeopardize this thing. I'm sure that had to be on your mind down the stretch. Oh yeah. I mean, as after Echicani, like stretching it out like that, Texas stretched it out pretty big. I can't even remember Daytona, mm -hmm. but it, that one was, I can't even remember the race because it was just hectic the whole time. Yeah. We had a couple that were close, but for the most part, like once, once I got to where I wanted to be on the track, like comfortable lead, then I just managed the races. We'll get right back to the show, but now a word from our sponsors. And thank you for listening to these ads. Without these great companies, none of this would be possible. Show your support for the people who support us. The official tire choice of Digging Deep, CST tires are the choice of ATV Racing's elite on the track, in the woods, and every other terrain. CST tires swept the ATV racing world in 2022 as Joel Hattrick, Bryson Neal, and Bo Barron rode their Pulse MXR and Pulse HT tires to an ATV Pro Motocross title, GNCC XC1 Pro title, and 10th ATV Pro Works Racing title, respectfully. Led by champion Joel Hattrick and podium contenders Bryce Ford, Jeffrey Restrell, and Nick Janusa, CST's Pulse MXR tire is the most trusted tire in ATV motocross today. Available in soft and standard compounds, the Pulse MXR offers the highest level of traction, most predictable cornering, and superior wear characteristics when compared to the competition. And did I mention they have a contingency program as well? Visit shop.csttires.com to join the CST takeover today or prepare to be beat by someone who did. The best of the best choose CST. Do you? You know we're Team Blue Crew here at the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast, as the Yamaha YFZ450R is the official ATV of Digging Deep. In a move started by eight-time ATV MX Pro Class National Champion Chad Weenan, who with his next championship will become the winningest champion in ATV motocross history, we are living in ATV Racing's YFZ450R era. Alongside Weenan, seven-time GNCC XC1 Pro ATV National Champion Walker Fowler, Welcome to pair of new champions to the Yamaha Champions Club as the podium-proven Yamaha YFC450R proved to be the winning choice for Joel Hetrick and Bryson Neal. This unprecedented success for the YFC450R, its unrivaled quality and performance, and the clear fact that Yamaha is the leading OEM supporter of ATV racing has resulted in a complete Yamaha takeover within the sport quad market. Evident by the continuation of Yamaha's Blue Crew Racer Support Program, Yamaha riders will once again cash in on payout and prize opportunities in 2023, including a chance to win a brand new YFZ450R. For more info, head over to YamahaBlueCrew.com. Follow Yamaha Outdoors as well as the new Blue Crew official channel on social media and check out Yamaha's full proven off-road lineup at YamahaOutdoors.com today. SSI decals, your decals, your way. SSI decals sets the standard with the best looking decals, graphics kits, and vinyl wraps in the industry. Established in 1947, SSI took shape as an offshoot of their parent company by doing a little work for local pro Chad Weenan. Nearly two decades later and fueled by a passion for ATVs, the company has flourished into one of ATV Moto's most recognized brands. From ATV Motocross, SSI has expanded into graphics and design work for top racers in GNCC, works racing, pro motocross and supercross, off-road, and more, headlined by eight-time world champion top fuel drag racer Clay Milliken. Whether your project is big or small, SSI decals will make your identity stick. Get started today at SSIDecals.com and use code DIGGINGDEEP10 for 10% off at checkout. Things are about to get sick. The Digging Deep ATVMX podcast is brought to you in part by DID and their wide range of championship winning chains. From the street to the track and everywhere in between, DID chains are designed to give you the optimal riding experience with great performance and increased chain life. Consistent to the core, pick up your box of reliability today. DID, what drives you? We are proud to be partnered with Namira Technologies. For over 20 years, Namira has pushed the limit of value and reliability in the ATV and side-by-side -side market. Covering more applications than anyone in the industry, Namira's full line of cast and forged pistons, connecting rods, gasket kits, 
and industry-leading top end repair kits and more have led to higher overall engine performance for your machine. Visit your local dealer or online at www.namira.com and follow along on Instagram for giveaways and exciting new products in 2023. Namira Technologies, your one-stop shop engine component supplier. We are pleased to be partnered with Bronco ATV and UTV Components. Bronco has been an industry leader in replacement hard parts and accessories for all makes and models for over 15 years. With a catalog that includes a full line of electrical components, engine internals and cylinders, shock and suspension parts, winches, clutch kits, valves, carb kits, bearing kits, and drive chain parts, Bronco is your hard part source for whatever you need for whatever you ride. Available exclusively through distributors around the world, visit your local dealer or online at broncoatv.com. For over 150 years, Valvoline has been dedicated to constant improvement and innovation across all disciplines of racing. As a proud member of Team Valvoline for nearly a decade, I have witnessed their unwavering commitment to pushing the boundaries of performance. Valvoline has sponsored some of the greatest names in motorsports, solidifying their position as a powerhouse within the industry. Being a part of this historically great team has been an incredible privilege. When it comes to my equipment, whether it's my daily commuting vehicles, race quads, or anything in between, I trust nothing but Valvoline. Their range of products and lubricants consistently deliver increased horsepower, durability, and engine life. I'm excited to announce Valvoline's breakthrough in performance, Valvoline Ultimate Power Sports. With up to eight times stronger rust protection and 50% better wear protection, this cutting edge formula ensures your ATV's engine runs smoother and longer for the ultimate ride. Tackle rugged terrains with confidence knowing your ATV's engine is equipped with the best protection available. Ready to experience the next level of performance? Head over to shop.valvolineglobal.com and use code DIGGINGDEEP10 at checkout to unlock an exclusive 10% off on your purchase. Don't miss out on this limited time offer to enhance your ATV's performance with Valvoline's ultimate power sports engine oil. I just felt like it was going to be really hard for somebody to run my pace to check her flag. Yeah. Like, so they could, they're, they're getting better hundred percent because mm-hmm. their freaking sprint laps are really hard to beat <laughs> at some tracks. Like at some, uh, the really gnarly ones, like I'll beat them and I'll beat them. I beat them by a second. I mm-hmm. beat them by almost two, but you get them on these hard pack tracks. These two, like their bikes are fast and they hang it out there and they just like, they hang it out there. I'm watching sometimes and I'm like, it's no wonder their lap time is like that because how I, they're just not. Dude, that was you 10 years ago though. I know. You know? I'm, I'm like, that's, I can't argue the fact that that makes you go fast, but do that crap for the whole race. I'll be impressed. <laughs> and that's, that's the only difference is that, that just gotta, you gotta pick that up. Yeah. You know, yeah. I hope they don't, but. If they do, we're ready for a, a late, late race battle. It's fun to listen to your opinion there, because like I said, you were once that guy at the same time, like it, it is very cool for me on the sideline to watch these guys. I mean, you're setting such a high bar for them. Mm-hmm. And if you weren't at alien level, like we've been calling you all year, like if you weren't at that level, man, like these guys shoot, like, I don't, I mean, they're going race winner speed. It's just that yeah. you, you're a cheat code, you know? So right. they're, they're not going slow They're That's, that's another thing too, is I don't want like them to be discredited for, mm. for what I did this year. Yeah. And I certainly don't want to be discredited for what I did because no. other people think that I didn't race fast riders. These riders are faster than, than the guys that I've raced. I've raced the fastest guys mm-hmm. and maybe like the gaps are well some of the gaps are about the same i've gapped you know chad and john like i've gapped those guys 10 20 seconds um but for the most part like it's an average of five to ten for these guys and like that's the same as it would have been over the years and these guys are they're they're beating me in qualifying so i don't first i don't i didn't get really beaten qualifying throughout the years until the last couple yeah, exactly. And it's been Brandon and Bryce, that's it. So the only difference that the only difference between now and when people want to say it was more competitive 15 or 20 years ago is the fact that the guys that you're racing against don't have titles. 
They're going right. fast enough to have titles, but mm -hmm. it's the fact that you and Chad have won the last 13 titles combined, right? Yeah. So, you know, they they obviously don't have any. Like they've had to race two of the greatest ever for the, you know, as long as they've been pros. And I yeah. give them a ton of credit for that. Like, you know, it takes a lot, I'm sure it takes a lot of a lot of motivation, a lot of willpower, all those things to get beaten down every weekend and keep oh, coming yeah. back for more, you know? Yeah, it's I mean, I I talk about it all the time to people and it's like Jeffrey's one of my best friends. He's stopping by here tomorrow. He's raced the same duration I have, mm -hmm. but like, he's like you said, like he's raced the whole time and he doesn't have a title and it's not like he's a slow guy. He's just, he was the third place guy for years and he was the fourth place and he went back to third. Dude, he um, he, yeah. He's on the bubble for all those years, but he's racing, you know, me, Chad, Thomas, uh, Natalie and like those, us, those three right there have those titles, you know, for the, over the yeah. last 15. Exactly. So, yeah. so I think you're, you're exactly right. And you know where I stand on this thing. Like I, th I think the class is gnarly. I think that those guys probably don't get enough credit because like you just said, you go undefeated, but that's saying more about you, not about the, about the class. So right. this is a, a perfect time to ask this question. So I've been wanting to ask you this since mid season, probably when I, when you and I chatted at, uh, at Walnut there, it's almost like your mind, at least from my perspective, it's almost like your mind was in a different place this year because in the past, I know that you got some gnarly competitor in you. Like I know you went to the line seeing red when you're mm -hmm. racing against Chad. Like I know you went looking for a fight, right? Like you could just see the aggression, all those things. But this year, you know, you're on Gloop's videos chumming around with the guys right before the gate drop and smiling and laughing and joking and all these things. So I guess my question was like, is it hard or was it hard to take your mind to, you know, that gnarly competitive level, because it was almost like you were in a different mental space this year. Like, you know, I know you're at a different place in your career. We just kind of talked about that than you were 10 years ago, but you know, I think Chad brought out the best in you at times or the most competitive of you mm -hmm. at times. So was it almost like a job this year to take yourself to that level? Did you have to amp yourself up before these gate drops? Because again, the vibe seemed, you know, it seemed totally different. It least from my perspective yeah i mean obviously it was it was different like my main rival is not there uh the guy i've battled with forever yeah and and yeah like me and him we race hard we race aggressive and we don't like to lose to each other so it's it's always it's always like we're seeing red for each other when yeah. we're out there but even at the later years here it's not been so gnarly and i don't even mean like i don't even mean like you hate each other i just no. mean like like on track aggressive. You know who you're gonna have to beat. Like you yeah. know, like you know, I and I often think about this. It's funny because I'm like, okay, and, and maybe it's not this way, but in my mind, you know, whether it's you or Chad, like if you're in the gym or you're working on your quad or you're driving to the practice track or whatever, I'm like, they gotta be thinking about each other yeah. a little bit. Like, what's this other guy doing right now? Oh yeah, you always think about it. If you're if you're a racer, you're and you're doing something. You're like thinking, I'm mm -hmm. gonna do this better than him right now. He I'm ain't doing, doing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He ain't doing what I'm doing. Yeah, you know that's just like a confidence thing, and you you don't even have any idea what the other guy's doing for the no. most part. But right. you just think you're gonna do more. <laughs> He's gonna ride two twenties. I'm gonna ride four. Yeah, you know, like exactly. it's it's funny stuff. But yeah, it's it was definitely different. Uh, there was a couple rounds where. Like I got irritated on the line with um, just like some comments that it, it's not like I was irritated, but it's just enough to to piss me off that I'm like, all right, let, OK. Brandon told me that there was one day where you guys were like not having each other or something late in the year, which is so funny because Ooh, me not, and Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. Between you and Brandon. And it's so funny because I talked to my Briar Cliff. I'm like, man, like, how weird is this? You know, like you when you were staying with me 10 years ago or whatever longer than that probably like you spent all day on the couch watching joel hetrick videos now you're joel's trainer like you're dating carly's yep. sister but but you're also the guy who's trying to sour his perfect season like <laughs> yeah try to try to make sense of that dynamic there it's a mess oh yeah yeah it's there's there was just times where that happened you know and then i i got fired up and you know, that's that's where I started out hotter than I normally did. Right. Uh, because there was a difference in how I was attacking the first portion of the race because of how I was acting at the gate, I feel like. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
for over the years, I've I've wore headphones or like I didn't I didn't talk to nobody. Uh-huh. And and Brandon's really good at that. Like he doesn't really want to talk to anybody. He has his helmet on for the most part, or he has headphones on. Yeah. And I think he wants that dynamic of like I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna you know put it all on the track, like be aggressive, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and, and everybody else is just cutting up. So that's where like if you don't have headphones, it's hard not to talk to the other guys. Mm-hmm. But Sometimes other guys will be talking and someone will say something and it'll sort of piss you off. And then you're like, Oh, okay. Well, let's <laughs> let's see. You. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I mean. It's not even like anything crazy bad, but it's just it could be it could be different. And maybe it should be a little bit different for everybody. Sometimes is it maybe it shouldn't be so light because it is for some of us, it's a our livelihood and mm-hmm. professional athletes. So it's not like we're all trying to be best friends out there. And and like I said, some of them do it. And some of them sit there in in silence. So sometimes the guys in silence are just like, that's, I used to do that. I just noticed it being a little different for you. You know, I just noticed it. I just noticed the vibe being different. And I wondered, cause for me and my listeners would know this, like I've said a few times, like, like I, I want to hate that guy, you know what right. I mean? Like a little bit, you know, like whoever you it might be have... that I'm racing against and it's different now. Like, obviously yeah. I'm racing a vet class and just having a little fun, but like, it's always been like in my mind, it's like the, it's like watching the Jordan doc. Okay. And like how he uses everything, like he'll lie to himself about somebody saying something, but right. it's, I, and I've always felt like even before I saw the last dance, I was like, man, like I resonate with that a little bit where it's like, you know, I just don't like that guy. You know, like I, right. I can tell by the way he's looking at me. I don't like that guy. You know? <laughs> yeah. I feel like you got to have a little bit of that, 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 that gets the intensity. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I just, just got a feeling that we saw a different version of you this year. And, and maybe, you know, some of it too is because you hinted at the fact earlier that you felt like, you know, no matter what happens, as long as it's dry, like nobody can run my speed for the entirety of these motos. So, you know, maybe yeah. that, maybe that's part of it too, where, oh, yeah. you, know, you know, you don't have to be perfect every single lap. You make it look perfect. Don't get me wrong, right. but you don't have to be perfect every single lap because, you know, you and in, in that quad of yours are so in lockstep. You're so perfectly in sync with each other that no matter what happens, you're going to be able to make it happen in this race. Like you have 25 minutes essentially to right. get this thing done. And that's, you know, I, I'm assuming that that that's that's a, a confidence booster that yeah. uh, you wouldn't have had years ago. Because I also found myself all season long, you know, thinking to myself, like what it must be like to be you in winning all these races. Your you know perfect season was obviously a talk, at least in the media side, where, mm-hmm. what we do all season long. So, I mean, basically from the first race on, we were on perfect season watch. So mm-hmm. to pull that off when it was under the microscope is amazing. But at the same time, I'm like, Joel went through a lot of hardships to get here, you know, like the, the chain coming apart at Loretta's all the DNFs over the years, the heartbreakers that I, I I think about your quad going up in smoke at pleasure Valley, like all the stuff that happened on the Honda, what a lifetime ago that feels like at this point. Yeah, it does. It feels like a lifetime ago, man. And then it's so, you know, relieving to have had these, these really good past couple of years. Like I tried to talk to a, a couple of the guys down at the the autograph signing and try to explain that to them. It's like, yeah, I'm winning right now, but I literally went through some of the worst hardships that I think any of those guys have, have probably thought about going through or went through themselves. Like when the, the, the 2018 Loretta's like leading the championship, going there and then losing my chain and then losing by one point, that right there that would have been that would have been my the second one uh it would have been two in a row for me yeah that right there dude that took me so far backwards that i just like i didn't even want to ride after that i i was so devastated and like i went out that night and tried to have a good time and just put on the the face of whatever you know like i'm i'm going to be fine but that really really hurt and i'm so I guess it's just like an act of God that I won the next year off Mm -hmm. of him losing his chain. So it's just unbelievable that happens. Mm -hmm. That whole scenario to me, when like when he has never had a freaking DNF, dude loses the chain. I'm like, when like they canceled each other out, you know? Yeah. It's like, just canceled him out. 
I couldn't believe it when I passed him. I'm like, you gotta be freaking kidding me, dude. I'm about to, I'm going to win this championship now. As soon as that happened to him and I passed him, I'm like, I'm winning. That was 2019. Yeah. Uh, red button. I'm like, I'm winning this one now. I can win this. And right after that happened mm-hmm. and we won the, the rest of the motos and it was freaking insane. Um, and then yeah, 2020, like you said, bike goes up in smoke. Boom. There's not a potential championship in, in graphs that in grass there. Um, but it changed the course of that it, championship. It totally. Yeah. Totally took me out of it. Um, so that was, that was actually the race where we decided to go to Yamaha the next yeah. year. Yep. And then, you know, 2021, not even in, in realm of a championship, just from my own faults. So no big deal. And then 2022, 23, 24, here we are. And so it's been, dude, and then it's been, you just made it look so good. you made it look so easy. It's been so yeah. Perfect. Like that's another thing that we talked about on, we obviously talked about you a lot on the, on the review show there. And the fact that you're going at the speed that you're going, that nobody else can rival the speed that you are able to go for as long as you're able to go that speed, the fact that you're able to do that and make it look so perfect to make it look so smooth, to make it look so in control. Like that's the thing that just blows my mind because you've gotten to this level where, like I said, it's alien level, it's out of this world. And it's just really fun to see because we've seen you morph from, and I I know I've said this a lot of times not as many times to your face as i've said it on the show but we've watched you go from wild child you know dude as a rookie who was the fastest guy on the racetrack but was was not going to keep it on four wheels to now the guy that is the fastest guy on the racetrack and hits his mark every single lap like to to watch that and then like you said all the hurdles and trials and tribulations over the years man yeah it, it, it puts it all into perspective, but to see you still here doing it, you know, a number of years later, what this would have been your 13th year as a pro, I think 13th yeah. or 14th, 13th or 14th. This might've been my 14th, 14th, 2011 was my first year. 2011 so, was your rookie year. Yeah. So just amazing to think about the different iterations. You on a can, yeah. yeah, you on a can, well, Kawasaki, Honda, Can-Am, Honda, Yamaha, man, it's, it's just been what, what a road. And then right. living here with the perfect season. It just blows my mind. Yeah, man. It's I literally the last three years have been obviously the best of, of racing course. for me. And of course. Can't go without credit to the freaking team, Phoenix Racing, David Eller, dude. Like when when you say my machine is so good, it is purely because of them yeah. and the testing that we're able to do, the the parts we're able to get, Gary being able to make the calls and make this stuff happen for me, put it on the machine, do the testing when we need to be, be where I need him to be so we can ride. Like it is such a huge benefit and, and like so freaking grateful to be, just be a part of that because uh, our, our program's insane. It's, dude, it's so good. literally unbeatable right now. And that's what we just saw. I dude, it's, it's just hard to say like how, I can't even explain how good my quad is, mm-hmm. but like a couple people have wrote it and they're like, I-, I need this, this, and this. I'm like, yeah, well you, I don't know if you're going to get them all. Yeah. You said that but, to me earlier in the season that it's the, yeah. I told you it's the Joel Hetrick effect. Like Dude. no matter what you have good, bad, or indifferent, we could put you with the, all the stuff that you don't run, right. Give it to these guys and tell them that this is the Joel Hetrick thing. This is the Joel Hetrick setup. And they're going to be like, Oh man, I got to have it. Dude. And, and, that's what I try to tell everyone too, is like set your machine up for you because my machine is set up for me and it works like the best. It might work good for some other riders that get on it, whatever, but it works the best for me. It, it ain't going to work good for Chad Ween. And I promise you that, <laughs> but, and I ain't going to get on his and I, I would hate it. You know, I, I would never ride it. We interrupt this program for a special news bullet. The following message is brought to you by manscaped.com. The Manscaped engineering team has outdone themselves this time, creating the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, now available for purchase in the U.S. and Canada. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, an official sponsor of the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast, with this exclusive offer of 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. I'm one of the first people to try the new 4.0 and I am blown away. This thing is next level. 
What sets this trimmer apart from all the rest? The Lawnmower 4.0 gives you the ability to turn the LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. It features a new multi-functioning on-off switch with travel lock for those of us who like to travel. And my favorite, the new trimmer allows you to customize your trim with four different guard lengths and upgrade from its predecessor that only featured two. If you're listening, you know that good tools are a must, so wait no more to get the best tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com by using code DIGGINGDEEP20. Hey everyone, this is Larry Mills, president of DP Breaks North America and proud partner of the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast. We at DP Brakes are a longtime supporter of ATV racing and the world leader in centered brake technology, dominating the ATV world for decades by supporting the best four-wheel racers on the planet. This year's lineup includes Jeff Restrelli, Mark Baldwin and Baldwin Motorsports, Ford Brothers Racing, Nick Janusa, and many more, including Mr. Digging Deep himself, Cody Jansen, plus all the top 17 GNCC pros such as seven-time champion Walker Fowler, Bryce O'Neill, Hunter Hart, Cole Rich. Richardson, Jared McClure, Adam McGill, and previous champion Chris Borch. These top riders continue to appreciate the high performance and impressive durability that their DP brakes have to offer, products that ultimately help place them on top of the podium week after week. DP brakes are available through www.dp-brakes.com or you can purchase them through your local Parts and Limited stocking dealer, or you can even message us, myself, Larry Mills, or DP Brakes on Instagram or Facebook. And if you have any questions about product or sponsorship support, please ask us. We are waiting for you. Join the best ATV riders in the world equipped with DP Brakes, and have a great year, everyone. Nearing two decades into the brand's existence, Factory 43 is back and better than ever, continuing to make major waves in the ATV world. For the third consecutive season, Factory 43 is the official aluminum parts choice of the Phoenix Racing ATV team, providing their state-of-the-art Evo Nerf bars, MX-style front bumpers, and grab bars for two-time champ Joel Hetrick. If you're in the market to upgrade your Nerf bars, bumpers, or grab bars, head over to Factory43ATV.com to see their full line of industry-leading products available for all makes and models. Head over to Factory43ATV.com today. Hey everyone, it's Michelle Stillo, director of the D6 Ultimate Quad Series. We've been working hard over the years to bring you the very best in local ATV motocross racing. The D6 Ultimate Quad Series has race classes for all ages and skill levels. Maybe you're an experienced rider or you're just starting out, we have a class for you. We're excited to announce that we have 11 rounds of racing at tracks located in Pennsylvania, New York, and Maryland. For more information, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We've accomplished a super good base setting for every event we go to. Don't have to touch hardly anything. Like Jay Goble, Impact Solutions has the Elkas, I mean, just Dialed. glued to the ground. Like there's a couple um, clips I shared on my YouTube from my YouTube of me just getting tossed around in the sand. And I, I would have probably ate it if it if it wasn't for for the shocks being so good. So mm-hmm. just, you know, crediting crediting those guys because it, it needs to be addressed that that is a, another big portion of success for me over the years is the you know limited issues on the machine and if we have issues it's being fixed the testing uh the the r&d everything that goes into our program has been so freaking good for us that um i think now we're we're catching all the effects of of this Mm -hmm. it's been a program that you guys have obviously got to perfect level and it's been pretty quickly too, honestly, because the the AMA has and still, you know, a newer thing for you. It doesn't feel new at this point, but you know, it's only been a handful of years, a few years at this point. So um you mentioned Gary. So is he basically like the whole ATV program, basically? Like does he mm-hmm. is he the one getting the parts and and all that stuff, quarterbacks and taking care of all that? So he is the main ATV guy. So he he kind of addresses all the sponsors for the ATV guys, Bryce okay. and Grace and me. So if we need anything parts related, like that's who we're going to get with to, and Gary will make the calls or, or get the parts. Lonnie does our engines. Um, yep. Obviously DASA cuts our heads. So like that's all done right in house too. Everybody is able to communicate with that. Uh, so yeah, Gary's, Gary's running the parts and building nice. my machine, helping Grayson with his machine. Grayson's his own mechanic. He likes to do that. 
Um, okay, cool. he, t- he likes to tinker, so he's always tinkering with his stuff, okay. as we say. Uh, but Gary does help him if he has a big job to do or a frame swap or something like that, motor swaps. Got it. Um, but Bryson stuff is all done at his place. So yeah, uh, for the most part, yeah, that's the that Gary's Gary's our main guy. Got it. You got to get Gary on here and ask him the type of stuff that I go through weekly. I would love to. I tear up so much re- like brake parts. You know, I don't know why, probably because I'm on the brakes a lot. Sure. And it sounds crazy. Like, oh, well, you're not. Why are you on the brakes? I am on my brakes more than anyone. I have no brake pads half the time I ride. Well, because you're dragging been, them, I, right? You're dragging I'm them. just dragging them. Yeah, yeah. I'm freaking. And my pedal's so low that, like, I can't just drag them for no reason. Like, I'm digging my foot in there <laughs> for a reason. So it's, uh, I just, like, and Kevin too, he's like, why you got brake pads again? It's, it's been, you know, four days. I'm like, dude, I don't know. I'm it's sand too. So I, I blame it on the sand. But, Tears it up. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. It's just, but clutches. Um, I, I, I don't know it, what, like normal, um, clutch use. like uh, how much, how many hours people put on their clutches. Yeah. I don't, we don't change my clutches ever. No. Like, I don't think I touch the clutch because he pulls them out. Uh, he's like, you want to change the clutch? And I'm like, no, there's no reason to. And so every race, I've never put a clutch in. He he pulled one out and I'm like, yeah, just take it out. We'll swap it. And I use it for practice for like 20 hours. Yeah, just because. Because after the heat and cool enough times, even if yeah. you're using it, you feel like they get a little glazed, like you should put a new one in just because. Right. But yeah, it's same thing. Yeah. It's not It's not the old days when it was a, uh, you're a little kid, you know, you're a young rider and you're on a Honda and you need one every moto, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. That's that's just, it's so much different now. And it's yeah. it's so funny. It's so nice too. Like you said, the Yamaha doesn't require as much maintenance, but you know, normal wear and tear down in, in the sand too, getting the bike hot. Like we, we would run into just different types of problems, but not, nothing crazy. Like I said, when you're Joel Hattrick, wear and tear is on another level than, than, than the rest uh, of us. So. Shock services was the main thing. I feel like I went through so many shocks just because I ride so much. Like after mm-hmm. a certain amount of time, I didn't want to keep riding them because of how they get too plush and then it starts yeah. hurt my feet i don't want right. my feet to, you know i'm old so i can't be dealing with that <laughs> i gotta keep jay working right 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 yeah love love jay and the the impact crew there so let's let's take it to the end of the season here so you you clinch this title at briarcliff your fifth title overall your third in a row of course your third in a row is stamped at this point so take me through loretta's then for you because you've already been and we've talked about it here you're on record already saying it over the course of the weekend there that it was terribly stressful Mm -hmm. so then you know first moto you come out and i went into the weekend thinking like we've seen it over and over and over again like you rip two hole shots you spin your laps like no big deal him ha no no big deal that's what i was thinking yeah. was going to happen here and joel that, that was great. not not at all how loretta's went for you so first moto obviously you get bunched up with the other two and a three rider battle is exactly where you do not want to be especially with this record on the line and i was yeah. watching it play out thinking man this is not where joel wants to be at all right now and then second moto too like not that anything too crazy happened but you got ran up over the berm by wesley and uh. just being around wesley is one thing in itself oh, right so all these things the way that it played out like in the end wasn't a big deal but man like think about if you would have got stuck in that pile up for a Dude. little longer like it would have got really interesting and way too close for comfort david asked me the same thing he's like what would you have done like if you got stuck in there or if like that was you you would have been the rider to jump right off and try to rip your quad out though i am confident in that I, that's why i told him like dude i would have got off because I, I know i can win if i'm 20 seconds down i, I can't win them if i'm a minute down no and they were they were upwards of a freaking minute yeah so like and that's that's as soon as soon as i hit them two as ridiculous as this is like i'm buried leaning okay and i can't freaking touch my rear brake so i've seen it happening and i'm like i'm just stuck dude i can't i couldn't get up in time to get my rear brake so i just ran into him and i'm like oh my god here we go i just so happened to you know inch myself back and here goes bryce Blop gas right on the side of him and then i went right under him like perfect timing for me but holy crap man i seen that coming from a mile away and then i heard it um 
Like, I'll just tell you exactly. Like, this is my opinion. This is what I saw. I'm right yep. behind them. Yep. Uh, this is from me and my my race. I have unbiased opinion. Yep. We're we're making the turn. Like, cause I I'm not like trying to set anybody up yet. I'm just like racing. So we get close, and I'm taking tight inside there. Or no, I'm actually sweeping out that lap. So I was sweeping out to cut in. Yep. And uh, Brandon's like pitched in. Bryce is going, he kind of like diverts from going to the outer line and drives like kind of in the middle and then goes into the inside. And at the last second, it's like blurps the gas right into the rear tire. And I'm like, oh, here we go. And then gets sideways. And then there I am stuck. Can't move. Buried in the bike. Hit him. Get out. And then Wesley gets around. And I'm like, holy crap, that was best case scenario for me right there. I'm sure I thought about that too. I'm like that first lap after you got free, you had to be like, I can't believe that just happened right there. Like, I can't believe how close this thing was to going sideways. I, could, I couldn't even then, think. Yeah. I couldn't even think. Cause I was already too stressed out. And then that happened. And cause at the beginning, I'm like, man, this is going to be a tough race. These two in front of me, like, I'm just going to try to late, you know, wait um, till later on in the race. If I mm-hmm. have to, whatever I was chilling. So I was fine with where I was at. But then that happened and it took me like it probably took me a lap or two to kind of like chill out from that. And <laughs> and then I get to Wesley and I, I knew that me and Wesley, because uh, he, he told me before the race, this little bastard, he's like, he's like, you got one coming. I'm like, <laughs> dude, for what? Like, what did I do now? And I came over on him at Briarcliff on the face of the triple because I freaking uh, it's when me and Bryce got together and I went oh, outside yeah. and I like wheelied into him. I didn't intentionally cross him. Um, so I called him and I was like, Hey man, like, you know, I don't want to think you, I'm a, I don't want you to think like I'm a cross jumper or something, you know, sketchy. Like I didn't mean to come across the track. Right. And, uh, like he just wasn't cool with it. That's <laughs> understandable. Like he was joking a little bit, whatever. Yeah. But I knew he wasn't he cool with it. Cause at the end of the phone call, he's like, you got one coming and uh and i hit him at pleasure valley too but i told him i'm like dude you're being a roadblock for me i had to get you out of the way so wait wait, wait. so then se- second moto when he runs you high is that on purpose or what's the deal oh it's 100 percent on purpose oh, yeah he man. did that shit on purpose because and he even told me he was gonna but i didn't know that he was there under me um <laughs> for for some reason or i thought it was someone else because i should have known that he was gonna do it if he was under me um and sure enough he was right there and i didn't like cut cut down or nothing i just took it and i i like just when it happened i just kind of chuckled i'm like this mother effer dude are you kidding me right now so as fans joel as fans to to see all this go down to to see you truly have to earn it at the finale you know it was kind of enjoyable but but yeah man for you like you had you made it way more interesting than it needed to be yeah, it was a good good time racing. Like I, I definitely battled it out. So I, I can make my way through the pack if I have to, I guess. And it was definitely fun racing. Like what nobody gave me an inch and I I expected that. The the later the racing went on throughout the season, I figured it would get harder just yeah. because the fact of like, you know, Bryce had mentioned it a couple of times, like I'm gonna do everything I can to make you not have this perfect season. Mm-hmm. Under I get it. Obviously you should. Mm-hmm. You know, you shouldn't want me to win every race so i knew i knew it was getting harder and harder but and that was something that i said on so many of the shows too is like i know joel wants them to give you know him their best shot you know but at the same time especially when you're getting close to this record i gotta imagine it gets a little old get you know having the target on your back knowing that everybody like nobody wants anything more than to knock you off not that you oh, don't have that in normal races too but yeah it's just a different dynamic you know it, it was it was definitely different and I, it wasn't really like everybody but it was definitely like some that had you know that in their mind to like all right you want to you want to get this you're gonna have to work for it buddy and i'm sure right like they don't want on their record that they let you go perfect yeah, like we're we, you know, I beat him like that. That right there is a record for them. So it did get tougher, definitely, because they raced me. You know, everybody raced really clean at the beginning of the year, and you know, just I felt like as the year went on, like the the racing got more aggressive. Not even with me, really, just throughout the field in general. Yeah, the class got faster and faster and yeah, faster, faster as and it did. got tight, tighter points, and uh-huh. you know, people want to make positions, make more money, and yeah. that's 
that's what happens. No doubt. So take me inside your mind. You overcome all this late in that second moto. You know that this thing is going to happen. So take me through what's going through your mind those last couple laps of the the final moto of the season, and you're you're starting to realize that this thing is actually going to come together. What were you thinking? Oh, dude, anymore? Like I don't think I can't really think until I'm literally looking at the finish line. So. When when I was going through the sand, this is so messed up, dude. When I'm going through the sand, I'm like, I'm going in the deep line. I'm like, oh, hope my chain don't break right here. Oh like, my gosh! Dude, I thought that to myself. I'm like, why do you even say that shit? I should have said that. <laughs> don't put it in your mind. I, yeah. But I literally said it, we, or like thought it. I'm yeah. Like, I should have thought about that. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> if it's gonna break, it would have broke already. <laughs> right. I got freaking one turn left. I'll push this thing. So you didn't think about it until the very end, basically. No, not, not until like, I mean, I was thinking about it obviously, yeah. but yeah. In, until I crossed, that's when I was really like, well, I was looking, I was looking for my family the last lap and it, I couldn't really find anybody. I think they were heading toward, towards the podium. Yeah. So I was, I was trying to uh, acknowledge them last lap. So I was thinking about it then, but I was really being super cautious and just of course. thinking, thinking about everything like, Oh, my freaking tranny's going out. My, my <laughs> motor's blowing up. Well, that was another thing that we didn't touch on, right? Is that you guys changed the motor midday there because yeah. you we're hearing some extra noise or whatever. Yeah, I don't know if they've got it torn apart yet, or they're just not going to tell me, or if there's just nothing wrong, which is what everybody yeah, thinks yeah. happened. But yeah. I thought it was like clutch related at the beginning, and then um, I, I think it turned out to be like a like it had to have been like a transmission thing, but it still ran. Like I rode both qualifiers on it, just like that. It was just making like a screeching, like a weird noise. I've never heard. Gary heard it once, so we swapped motors, and that was it. I probably could have raced that motor, but I just, that wouldn't have been good. Not the day that you're going to chance it. So you cross the finish line, you complete the perfect season, finally comes to fruition, something that had been in your mind for a while at that point. You know, we see it, you know, spin around and we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That was sweet. Um, so like you said, and I actually have it written on my paper right here. Like it was probably a relief at this point. That's I think the exact word you used earlier. Yeah. So describe the emotions. I know it was a relief, but I watched you even before getting to the podium, I watched you on the quad kind of just slumped over it almost mm-hmm. like, like, almost like, man, like you left it all out there. Basically you went through the ringer. It was a roller coaster of emotions, all those things, the the images or the video of your dad putting his arm around you, all that stuff is like emotional. Even for me, mm-hmm. I just can't imagine what that must've felt like in that moment. You know, it was, uh, like I said, like we already kind of touched on all the trials and tribulations, the hurdles over the years, and then a really taxing year here. Like not mm-hmm. that there was a ton in doubt, but especially on a day where you really had to earn it at Loretta's and to do yeah. something that nobody had ever done all those things, man. And just to see the emotion hit you in the moment was, uh, it was pretty fun. Like the, you know, the exhilaration right after the finish line and then, oh, yeah. uh, man, we did it. Yeah. It was, it was fun to see. Success in the ATV MX world is similar to what creates financial success as well. The right people, the right advice, and more importantly, hard work and the benefit of an ongoing relationship as situations change and adversity is experienced. Do you have the right financial advisor to help you reach your goals? Haymower Financial Group can create a personalized, goal-based plan to help your family prepare for whatever life brings. Call me, Scott Haymower, at Haymower Financial Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, at 920-338-8150. That's 920-338-8150. Offices located in beautiful De Pere, Wisconsin, with registrations and clients nationwide. Headlined by the 4130 Chromali, Launderville Steel and Concrete Supply is a full-service steel supplier of new and surplus steel, aluminum, and stainless steel products. This racing family-owned full metal service center and concrete product supplier comes with over 30 years of experience serving the entire United States from their central Midwest location. As the number one choice for nationwide shipments and with available next day delivery in select areas, LSE has you covered near or far. 4130 is not just the chromoly tubing and plate used in the building of chassis for an array of motorsports applications, but it is also the name of the newest addition to the Pro Paddock with riders Jaden JJ Launderville and Max Linquist introducing the new 4130 Motorsports team. Launderville Steel offers a large selection of material for any project, including their concrete division that can supply everything you need to complete your next business or personal project. 
For a quote or more info, visit LaundervilleSteel.com today or give them a call at 715-675-6193. That's 715-675-6193. Here at Digging Deep, we have an obvious passion for ATVs and pridefully enjoy sharing the sport's history. Since 2019, when the podcast was born, we've been working to partner with individuals who share our passion, but one man and his vision had been missing from our partnership group until now. When it comes to the sports history, the hallowed grounds of Binky's Forever ATC Museum has it all. Binky Tapscott's mind-blowing collection of three- and four-wheelers has preserved history by spanning all makes and models from Honda three-wheelers in chronological order to unique builds that shaped ATV racing as we know it, like Doug Gust's iconic DRZ-powered hybrid thumper and everything in between. There's no denying Binky's passion, a passion that we certainly relate to here at Digging Deep. Binky's goal is to share his amazing collection with fellow enthusiasts by making his prize possessions accessible to the public via scheduled visits. Follow Forever ATC Museum on Facebook and watch foreveratc.com for further updates on possibly getting a chance to see Binky's Forever ATC Museum for yourself. We are proud to welcome Binky's Forever ATC Museum to the Digging Deep family. As the number one podcast in ATV racing, it's only right that we partner with the industry leaders in suspension tuning. Insert Impact Solutions. Impact Solutions is a full-service ATV and side-by-side suspension center specializing in the revalving and service of your motocross and off-road suspension. With over 25 years of elite-level knowledge, experience, and testing with riders of all ages and ability levels, Jay Goble and the Impact crew strive to exceed clients' expectations for service and setup. Impact Solutions is the official Elka Suspension Service Center of the United States, offering unmatched product knowledge and experience. Whether you're in need of service, parts, warranty, sales, or technical support, Impact Solutions has you covered. Head over to ImpactSolutionsATV.com or give them a call today. With the desire to keep you in the race, Ultimate Poly Products offers the ultimate protection collection of case savers, chain sliders, intake manifolds, and more. Founded on quality in 1998, this family-owned and operated business produces products created by racers for racers. These industry-leading products are proudly made and manufactured in the USA, with their case savers being made of the highest quality American-made polyurethane on the market and designed to completely conform to your engine case to help prevent case damage from a thrown chain because no one wants to be a spectator on race day. Join top pro riders like Bryson Neal, Walker Fowler, John Glotta Jr., Adam McGill, Cole Richardson, and more by using UPP Racing products. Use discount code DIGGINGDEEP15 at upprac.com to save on your next order. Ultimate Poly Products, made to last longer so you can ride more. Thanks for listening, and remember to support our partners. Now back to the show. The exhilaration right after the finish line, and then, oh, yeah. uh, man, we did it. Yeah. It was, it was fun to see. I mean, I felt so good. I felt like I felt like a kid. Like I, I'm, I'm literally, you know, doing what I did when I was a kid. I wanted to be the best, and I'm. I thought right then, and I said to my dad, like, that's that's pretty cool shit, ain't it? I'm the best there is right now, and like that's just to me, that's what we wanted to be. We wanted a legacy of uh, ATB racing, and then, you know, we got it. Here we are, yeah. Uh, and and here we are. We're just we're just building that legacy even even bigger, and it just felt so good to, to add something like that onto, onto my, my record of, of wins and yeah all that cool stuff and accolades. Like, you know, I just was racing full wheelers at first and now, <laughs> now we're setting records and now look what we're doing. Yeah. We're, we're doing, we're doing big stuff now with, with big people on a big team with, with a lot of good sponsors. And it's so, uh, I don't know. It's, it's like the coolest thing that you can imagine if you're, if you're an ATV racer, if you're a racer in general to do something like that, to go undefeated, win every event, like you can't even describe the feeling. It's uh, just, you feel so good inside. You feel just so accomplished. Like, like there's nothing else you could have done. And to be doing exactly like what you've always wanted to do, like to be doing what you dreamt of as a kid, like that's something that we harp on. I feel like a lot because not that many people get to live that reality you know? Yeah. And I'm sure you've taken it to a bigger stage than you probably would have ever dreamed of, you know, like it wasn't, oh, it's, it's not factory Suzuki or factory Kawasaki or whatever. Like we thought it was going to be 15 years ago, but like, right. 
you and the alignment that you've had with David over the last, you know, decade plus, um, cl- closer to 15 years, probably, mm-hmm. um, what a perfect marriage it's been. Right. And it's just, and then, you know, this is another thing that we touched on on that review show, but like for you, that was another added pressure point at that finale because all of those guys were there. Like you oh, see, yeah. I mean, not that David doesn't, you know, he's showed up at races like that's relatively normal, but the rest of the team is there and Donnie Luce is there and yeah. you know, Mike Walsh is there and all these people that come to Loretta's. Right. But you know that this time they were all there for you. They were all there to see history in the making. Yeah. And it was on you to step up to the plate. And like I said, on the review show, you knocked it out of the park, but like you knew why they were there. And that was a I whole know. other level of pressure. <laughs> I kept saying that too. I was like, I freak. I know everybody's going. I went to the shop actually, and I seen some of the trophies and the the checks, and I'm oh, like, oh okay. my god, man, you gotta be kidding me right now. They're putting this in the freaking truck. Why did I have to see this? I'm like, Gary, can you put this somewhere else? I did not want to <laughs> yeah, see it's this. bad juju. Like that is worst case scenario right now. It was a, uh, it was definitely stressful. Yeah. Unreal pal. So as we wind down here, one event still remains obviously on the schedule for you guys. So take me through your quad cross of nations prep and how you're getting ready for that. Like I'm sure you, you obviously you've outlined the fact that you take some time off and now you kind of probably got to jump in at some point here. So, so take me through that a little bit. Yeah. So um, basically we had our, couple weeks off now i don't know how long it's been really yeah uh losing track of time not riding and (laughs) doing something every single day right but yeah we just i actually just got back to training this past week or this yeah this week week. um i called brandon i'm like dude i'm i'm blowing up way too fast out here (laughs) eating chocolate reese's peanut butter cups and all this you got to send me some training because if you don't i don't know if we'll even win because i can't compete i'll be (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> be too big uh so yeah he got me back training i rode saturday at black ankle race to race got some gate drops in john glotta cody houghton were there it was a good time uh and i kind of like initiated my riding maybe so i'll Gosh. probably try to ride like once or twice a week and then when it gets to be like within two week range uh, i'll probably ride like two or three times a week and then you know just keep my training up not not like trying to ride a ton i don't want to you know put myself in a bunch of risky situations like not saying it'd be risky to ride but riding's risky no matter what 100 percent. like you got such a base too right now like you're you're fine like you've you've done a million laps this year like you're good i'm just gonna ride some just not much just 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 to keep the muscle memory going yes exactly so then this is a thought that i had today joel and it's Something that I hadn't hadn't crossed my mind until now, but you and Carly are expecting your third child. And mm, yes. we know you missed one quad cross of nations for Evelyn, I believe. It would have been yep. your, your first child. That was when would have been Chad, Thomas, and Jeffrey went, right? So yeah. was this ever in doubt? Like, was it ever too close for comfort or is it not close enough to to have any worry? Was that never a... a a thought for you guys because in my mind i'm like man was it was there ever a chance it was gonna be like you know like bryce brandon and max or something you know it could have been could it i mean or is this the first that that you've thought about it too like is it just no, not that close no it's it's that close like we've talked about it many times and oh, okay. because she's she's went early um not really with eli he was on time but evelyn was uh, a couple weeks early so Okay. This is putting us right on the fine line of too close for comfort. Uh, like for the most part, she should be fine. Got it. And like we've had our baby or Eli on uh, our our due date last time with him, so hopefully she just goes full term and we have no issues. Even if a couple of days early, so be it. That'd be fine. Uh huh. But you know, she if you ask her, her belly's so big right now to her that she's gonna pop like. Uh, right on the race day if you ask her i swear to god if she's i'm gonna i'm gonna be pregnant on race day and i'm gonna or she's gonna be having birth on race day and i'm like well that's worst case scenario Carly. how close is it joel like how how much time is between mm. race day and due date there's so the race day is the 28th and then like 
her due date's October 30th or 29th. Oh, so you got so it's a, it's a yeah, full it's, month basically. It's a legit month, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's, that's why we're like it's okay, but <laughs> you know, I'm not saying it couldn't happen. No, it it obviously could. Yeah, yeah. I, things happen. So so is she going or is she staying? No. Okay. Yeah, I she, figured she so. can't go. Yeah, she I figured so. Stay. I figured uh, I figured that's how that had to go. So yeah. the other thing too is in I could be I could be this is your life not mine so I could be totally wrong but I'm pretty sure that with Evelyn mm-hmm. was, what didn't she come like right after the race or something like you couldn't have wouldn't it have been hard for you to be there and then like come back in time or am I remembering that wrong? I can't quite remember but I thought it was like right on the line of the race. I I swear real close to it. Eli was right on Daytona and yeah. I crashed with him, then he or crashed there with Daytona. We had him right after, okay, because okay. I had to lay I had to lay in the hospital all jacked up. <laughs> but with her, I don't because she was September twenty fourth. Due date would have been very very close to the to the race. I just I thought I remembered, and I oh and yeah, again, it, I could be yeah. wrong, but I it, thought it I remembered was, being like if Joel would have went there, I don't know if he would have made it home in time. You know, no, she, she was the twenty fourth, and that event was probably the same weekend as this one the 20 28th because they so maybe it was right it. before whatever yeah, it was right whatever before. it was long story short i knew it was way too close that like yeah. i'm glad you didn't risk it you know yeah like that that was way too close i couldn't have risked that okay. one okay this so. one is like you know it's third kid it's a month so be it. now i'm just kidding <laughs> i would feel so freaking bad Okay, well, well, from this, so we already, we discussed it, but now from this point forward, it's back to the undefeated season, no jinx, like, yes. okay, yep, Good deal. yep, yep, we, that, that chapter's <laughs> closed. So uh, last question for you, pal, I touched on it earlier, but what's next? Like, how do you finish it? How do you, how do you follow this thing up? Because you just did something that no one, no one has ever done before in my mind. I mean, obviously the goal is to, you know, your goal is always to win every race out. That's not going to change. But now you've set the bar so freaking high for yourself that like, what does a person do now? You know, I mean, not only, I mean, lost in the, lost in the process of this whole thing is you, you, I think at least passing Chad. So at least as far as my documents go, you, you are now the winningest ATV rider of all time. But I know Phoenix had on the board that you're the winningest rider ever, as far as like the math goes, because we don't know a total on Gary and stuff. Like at least I don't. So you're already the winningest ever, right? Like you, you just had this undefeated season. What do you do next? So like upcoming, I would say, I would say like upcoming events, obviously want to win, you know, my motos at quad cross. That would be great. Uh And then for future, like my remainder of racing, uh, I I obviously want to get as, as many championships as as I can. The goal was 10. That would be great. Uh, so but five like five more, five more, and then in the process of five more, you would eat, you would get to a hundred overall wins. Can uh, you yes. imagine? Is that's that where you were going? Right there. Oh my I, gosh! My goal is a hundred overall wins. So that's that would be the the coolest for me is a hundred overall wins. I don't know if I'll stop then, but <laughs> so I remember it would have been like the last race of his professional career. Ricky Carmichael won a hundred, but I think it might've been a hundred motos as a professional. Cause he didn't race long enough to win a hundred overalls. I don't think, but a hundred okay. was a really big thing in 2007 when he was on yeah. an abbreviated schedule. I was there that day at Millville when he did it. And, uh, and yeah, to think about having a hundred dude, like I mean, yeah. even, yeah. and I remember last year, I remember last year, after Loretta's thinking to myself, you were at 57 at that time. And I'm like, yep. okay, if I do the math, if he were to win every one, he would pass Chad in the process. I know. So, it's so then to, to, to have it happen, to have you get to 67, right. dude, just, just unreal. So I knew you weren't going to have a solid answer. I don't know how you finish it up, but just try to keep winning races and see how long yeah. you can keep the streak going. That's it. But yeah, man. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for your time tonight. You gave me more more time than I expected. And I, I appreciate that so much. Yeah, you're always so gracious. We had a lot to talk about because we we weren't going to jinx it throughout the season here. Mm-hmm. But uh, obviously from all of us, from my family to yours, the whole Digging Deep crew and, and stuff, obviously we want to congratulate you on a season that will never be forgotten. Something that's never yeah. happened before. All that stuff. To be a five-time champion alone is an, an amazing thing. Now to be the only undefeated professional ATV motocross racer ever on the national level is an amazing thing 
And uh, yeah, man, so I can't thank you enough for your time. Got to congratulate you. And I'll let you go be with the family and best of luck at the Quad Cross of Nations, man. You do such a great job representing us over here, man. Just wishing you all the best. We're obviously cheering for you always. And and uh, you're such a great ambassador for our sport. So again, a little long winded there, but congratulations on everything. Thanks again for your time. And hopefully next time, well, I don't want to say hopefully we talk to you sooner than last time. I'm sure we'll do something right. with you around the Quad Cross of Nations. But yeah. But, but yeah. Otherwise, until next time, Joel, until <laughs> until the end of next season, maybe we're going back to back twice. Who knows? I don't want to jinx it. I won't jinx it after this point. But uh, hey. hopefully we don't got to wait. Maybe hopefully, but also not hopefully. I don't know how to say it. But yeah, uh, but, but yeah we're wishing you all the best. And we'll talk to you on the other side. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thanks for all the kind words. And I guess that's that is what has to be next is maybe just another back to back. I'm, I'm going to have to. uh that's the goal, I guess. Yeah, I so then we'll then we'll talk to you next August, pal. Talk to you then. <laughs> Sounds good. Awesome, man. Well, have a good night. Thanks for everything, and and uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. Appreciate you, man. Thank awesome, you, pal. Have a good night. Thanks so much. Yep. You too. That's Joel Hetrick signing off on the Digging Deep ATBMX podcast. Joel Hetrick is the best in every way, including as a guest. He's consistently one of the most enjoyable interviews that we do here at Digging Deep. Major thanks to Joel for being tonight's featured guest. Thanks to producer Dallas Jansen, my brother, for all his hard work. Thanks to my wife, Brooke, for everything that she does. Thanks to AMA official Harv Whipple. And thanks to all of our donors. Thanks to all of our partners. CSD Tires. Go to shop.csdtires.com today. Yamaha, thanks to Blue Crew. Thanks to SSI decals, Valvoline, DID Racing Chain, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV Components, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply, the financial advice of the Haymauer Financial Group, DP Brakes, Factory 43, Binkies Forever ATC Museum, Impact Solutions, Ultimate Poly Products, UPP Racing, use discount code DIGGINGDEEP15 at UPPRacing.com, the D6 Ultimate Quad Series, and Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with code digging deep 20 at manscaped.com support all the brands that support our show and don't forget to use those codes to save find it all on our website and be sure to click that rocky mount atvmc banner for all your gear and parts needs and to help us out and most of all thanks to you guys for listening shop our digging deep merch at shop.diggingdeepatvmx.com we have our full line of products available there including anything that you might have missed out on that sold out early at the Briarcliff Legends race so head over to shop.diggingdeepatvmx.com today you can find all ATV fantasy related things at atvfantasy.com and if you're looking for another easy way to help support us visit our website and click the Patreon or buy me a coffee buttons this allows you to set up a one-time or monthly contribution to support our efforts. Follow the show on social media, Digging Deep ATVMX Podcast, and myself, Cody Jansen, for additional content, coverage, and more fun stuff here in the off-season and as we lead up to the 2024 Quad Cross of Nations. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and more. Wherever you find podcasts, you'll find the Digging Deep ATVMX Podcast. All episodes, additional podcast providers, sponsor links, and discount codes, our show merchandise, fantasy info, and more can all be found on our website, diggingdeepatvmx.com, so check that out today. Be a friend, tell a friend. Please download, subscribe, rate, review, and share. And with that, for Joel Hetrick, Brooke Jansen, Dallas Jansen, and I'm your host, Cody Jansen, thanks for listening to and making us the most listened to podcast in ATV racing with more than 264,000 downloads last month in 109 total countries. Until next time, thanks for joining us in Digging Deep with the Stars of ATV Motocross. And as we do every year here, we are going to end this episode by shouting out all of our 2024 ATV Motocross National Champions, starting with the man that joined us here tonight, your AMA ATV Pro Class National Champion, Mr. Joel Hetrick. Congrats to Pro-Am National Champion, Mason Jackson. Pro Sport, Jaden Launderville. Open B, Aiden Wells. Open C, Vincent Marinucci. 450A, Damian Hubert. 450B, Aiden Wells. 450C, Vincent Marinucci. Production A, Cody Houghton. Production B, Riley Valiant. Production C, Vincent Marinucci. College 16 to 24, Vincent Dillon. Junior 25 plus, Brett Musig. Veteran 30 plus A, Matthew Simmons. Veteran 30 plus B, Dave Porter. 
Veteran 30 plus C, Austin Houchins. Senior 40 plus A, Chase Cunningham. Senior 40 plus B, Joe Thomas. Senior 40 plus C, Santiago Febre. Masters 50 plus, CD Music. WMX, Kinsey Osborne. Women's 15 plus, Ellie Rausch. Warrior, Justin Wess. Youth All Star, Andrix Beeland. 250 Mod, Skylar Paduznak. Schoolboy Senior, Skylar Paduznak. Schoolboy Junior, Caden Pearson. Super Mini, Caden Pearson. Schoolgirl, Lillian Plaza. Girls 8 to 13, Hadley Betts. 90 Open 8 to 13, Andrew Klutwick. 90 Automatic 8 to 13, Trevor Hughes. 90 Shifter 8 to 13, Ethan Cornell. 70 Open 6 to 11, Ethan Cornell. 70 Automatic 6 to 11, Sammy Joe Baxter. 70 Shifter 6 to 11, Ethan Cornell. 50 Open 4 to 8, Weston Nixon. 50 CVT 4 to 8, Weston Nixon. And 50 Automatic 4 to 6, Deacon Hughes. Congrats to all of our 2024 ATV Motocross National Champions. Things are crashing and burning here at the Digging Deep Podcast, much like the Titanic. Those guys were hauling ass, for real. I remember watching Doug Gus, I don't know who it was, Steel City, running the same times Friday afternoon as James Stewart was on Sunday back then. It was mental. I've never seen quads go that fast. Quad leaders are freaking 